Good morning everyone and welcome to the first video on this channel for what I'm thinking is probably more than a year and there's a very good reason that I've not uploaded on this channel for that long and it's simply that I kind of answered a question that I'd posed to myself in a previous video is my life interesting enough to warrant a YouTube vlog style channel and uh, sadly no it's not so I've just had no content basically there's nothing I've done in the last however many years months that any of you would find even remotely interesting including probably what I'm about to announce today but I am going to announce it and I am going to shift the focus of this channel to to make it very specific about a particular subject that I've I've been in love with since I was a child and have rekindled more recently so um I'm not moving away from the cycling channel. Anyone that knows me from the WKG WhatsApp cycling channel, that continues as is. I'm not moving away from that at all. But the reason for starting another channel on another with another hobby is I feel I've peaked as a cyclist. I'm not sure there's, I mean, if you've been watching my videos, you'll notice I actually won a race, a Zwift race about two weeks ago. Yes, most of the other competitors were disqualified, but I still won that race. And because of that, I feel the only way for me to go in cycling is down. So I will do that still for the enjoyment and the social aspects of it, but I'm not expecting to get the professional contracts that I was working towards as a result of it. I think that that time maybe has, has been and gone. So anyway, I'm shifting over to, it's another virtual sport, and it is the sport of sim racing. I had fallen in love with Assetto Corsa Competizione, which I know is a software that's been around for a while, but I actually only discovered it last August, September, and um, have put in 27, 28,000 kilometers of, of practice since that time, trying to unlock the obvious potential that I have within me as a racing driver. I will preface that by saying at the moment, I am I'm not a world beater. I'll acknowledge that. So if you're tuning into this channel expecting to see me taking on the very greatest in the world, that's not going to happen right away. Give it a little bit of time. That's that's where I'm headed. But I'm like I say, I'm new to this software. I have been racing Sims since I, I mean it was the original Jeff Crammond Microprose Grand Prix game that I first got into on my old Commodore Amiga. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was about 1985, 86, maybe a bit later than that. But anyway, I then raced every iteration of that. Uh, I moved on to the early Forza Motorsport games where I did hours and hours and miles and miles of racing with my older brother. And in fact, I probably should just let you know, no, I am not the best in the world yet. And he would hate me if I didn't acknowledge I'm not actually even the best in my family. He did regularly hand me um, a proper beating but that was using PlayStation controllers and all that malarkey I've, I've gone fully professional now with this this rig which uh, actually I'll talk to you about that in a minute because it's a little bit of a, a bit of a wobbly old girl and um, but anyway so I've moved on through the Grand Prix games Forza which introduced me to sort of GT uh, GT racing and now into Assetto Corsa which it's, this will start a riot amongst the three or four people that watch this video but it is the hands down the best racing simulator bar none eye racing race room gran turismo uh, or what's it called gt sport all the forces project cars nah they no i haven't tried any of those i'll admit since getting a set of corsa competizione but based on just a feeling this is by far the best racing simulator there is. So anyway, what this video will be is I'm gonna give you a very quick look at my setup. I will let you see what my, my streams are gonna look like because this channel is gonna be a combination of live streams of races, which I'm hoping will end up being community races where I bring some of you guys in. I, I, there's already a couple of guys from the cycling race team that um, we've been doing some sort of individual challenges 
and uh, I'd love to bring them in into some online racing and ideally set up our own server and, and create our own community events. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a combination of live stream races uh, and events and some edited videos which I'm hoping will work almost as tutorials because I am still learning a lot as I go on this. I've done miles and miles of driving but there are still facets of the menu system, car setups uh, and even more so when you dive into the, the online servers and, and all the rest of it which it's taken me a long time to learn so I'm hoping if I can actually just sort of shorthand some of the, the routes I took to discover what I've discovered it might help some of you get into it a little bit more quickly. I'll let you have a look at my, my rig which needs some serious upgrading but it does for now. I mean this has been sitting up in the loft. I, it was basically the first lockdown here in the UK that got me thinking I'm just going to dust off my helmet, dig out my old racing rig and um, just try and like I say unlock some of the, the inner Schumacher. Um, all right, that's the other thing I'll say, I'm not going to make any pretense about the fact that I, Schumacher is the greatest of all time, bar none. I don't even care about numbers of any other racers, it just doesn't matter. He did it in a way that no one else did it. Keep fighting Michael. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm going to unlock my inner Schumacher and um, I just want to, it would be just fun if, uh, if some of you guys come on this, this journey with me, journey of discovery. and. Um, I'm going to do some of them whilst drinking as well, which I think is a, is a new angle that not many sim race streamers have, uh, have done yet because drink driving is never ever a good thing unless it's on a simulator in your shed, which I think could actually be really funny. So uh, anyway, what I'll do now is I will quickly switch the camera angle and run you through my, my, rickety, old, my rickety old rig and then I'll, I'll show you what the live stream setup will look like. and. Um, Give you an idea of what you can expect in future videos. So this is my race cockpit. It is an ADX Ultimate Gaming cockpit. I don't, I don't know what the model is or anything. And I've actually made some adjustments, which meant I needed to prop up the pedal support and the front of the base there on some uh, some 4B2 which I think is the way you have to pronounce it. When you're saying four by two timber, I think you have to say four by two. Uh, I don't know why, but it's the rules. Uh, another adjustment I've had to make is because this clamp has sort of lost a little bit of its strength, the harder I brake on the pedals, the more I push my seat back away. So I find at the end of a race, I'm stretched out a lot longer, a lot further than I was at the beginning. So I've made this kind of tether using some, some zip ties, which, restricts that from going any further. Uh, I have also dropped the height of the seat within the frame so that I can create a more laid back and feet up kind of racing position. Um, but anyway, the rig itself, it's, it's not great. I bet it's a very cheap, basic and certainly good enough for a, for a beginner. It holds things together, albeit with a fair bit of wobble. Now all of that is stuff I will be addressing over time as I get better and can justify it. The steering wheel and pedals is, it's, this is almost a cliche now, but it's what I think is one of, or the best sort of entry level while still being good enough to, uh, to sort of get the most out of you setups. It is the Logitech G29. Uh, as you'll see, I've put some little reminder stickers on there for the the functions I've mapped to certain buttons with brake bias, engine map, lights, traction control, pit limiter, etc. The wheel itself is really good. It's not got the strongest force feedback or the most communicative communicative force feedback, but it's um, it feels nice in the hands. Shifters work well. The weak point is these pedals, and please excuse all the lack of cable management down here. Uh, the pedals. Well, it's a combination of the pedals and the frame they're sitting on. There's too much movement. You need to do a lot of heavy braking to get the most out of uh, GT cars, in particular this stunning GT3 Ferrari that's flicking through on my screen. And um, yeah, the flex and movement within the pedals, I think, is costing me a significant amount of time. So that's uh, my first racing excuse out the way, in the bag, and uh, something I, I will look to improve. 
this is my main racing monitor, which is only a 27 inch, uh, but it's a quite high spec, it's 144 hertz, so it works really nicely. But one upgrade I will really like to make is to get a at least a 32 inch ultra wide for better field of view more than anything. At the moment, I'm relying very heavily on the radar, which I'll show you in a moment in game, to um, alert me to the, the position of other cars around me, where a nice ultra wide screen would allow me to have view of my wing mirrors basically, which would, would be a great help. Up here is the second screen where I have my OBS running and uh, the stream setup. So that's where the magic really does happen. I've got my little control tree, as I call it, with the branches coming off, the mouse, um, little drink shelf down there, obviously keyboard, all very accessible whilst down in my, my racing position. And um, yeah, that's basically, that's basically the setup. What I'll do now then is I'll switch over to the actual screen recording and let you see what the streams will look like. Uh, maybe go for a little gentle spin, spin and a chat. Okay, I am all comfy in my wibbly wobbly racing setup. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna jump out on the track, just do a little bit of a, little bit of a blast. Uh, before that, let me just show you the car quickly. Uh, I know you'd have seen it in the intro, but I'll give you a bit of a closer look. I will let you know that there was a, a painstaking, scientific, very um, thoroughly researched decision process into what car I was gonna race this season. Um, basically came down to, I really like the look of the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo, so let's use that. There we go. As it turns out, it's, it is my favorite one to drive. I've not tried all of them, but it, I love it. It's got such a nice balance, uh, but just look at it. Uh, even more so when it has its own custom Team WKG livery. I'll make a whole separate video about that in the future. It's actually quite simple to do. Uh, the, the process of doing it is quite simple. What is hard is you, you have to do the design on a flat graphic and working out which parts of that graphic apply to which panels of the car is a little bit tricky and it's a heck of a lot of trial and error. I think I got to version 74 or something before everything was where I wanted it to be. But anyway, oh, in actual fact, well, I'm gonna show you something, but once you see this, you can't unsee it and it drives me bloody mental. There is one area of this car, which I don't know where it is on the graphic, on the flat graphic, so I can't change it. Oh, anyway, let me just show you. So this front splitter, the underneath of the splitter there should be plain carbon fiber. It's orange. I've painted it somewhere in that graphic and I've gone over every area of that graphic, marking it with numbers, trying to find out why that's orange. Because I want it back to plain carbon fiber. But every time I see this now, that's the bit I focus on. Just, uh. Anyway, I'm sorry, I've now ruined your opinion straight away of this, this stunning looking car based on that one thing, but hey ho, I will try and rectify it. Uh, so the design, WKG orange, obviously. Huge WKG logo on the top for any, whenever we get any of those nice helicopter shots. We got the WKG heart logo fading from the gray into the orange. Got a What's Up shameless plug for the cycling channel vlog. Uh, the Rillo logo, Pookie Power, powered by Pookie, the WKG GOAT, as all good race cars should be. And obviously my race number is 111. Uh, we've got, around the back, we've got the 111 Go Juice logo across the rear wing. Uh, I think, yes I have, I've even got the Fun Pain Torture Vomit icons nestled nicely into this, this stripe. Now this stripe is something... It may appear very simple and basic to you, but it's I put a lot of thought and toing and froing into the final layout and colour choice for this stripe because, and I hope I'm not kidding myself here, I think we can develop something that will become iconic in sim racing in the same way as Martini, Rothmans, Marlborough, Golf, Pink Pig, Jägermeister, I mean, I could go on. All of those truly iconic and timeless livery designs. And when your grandkids and my grandkids in the distant future are watching sim racing in whatever guise it is, delivered by whatever media delivery system exists in the future, 
a retro race is going to come on with somebody using that livery and they're going to be like, oh my god, do you remember the good old days of sim racing when with the Team WKG livery? That's my dream. <laughs> and maybe in real life too one day. I'll, I'll do it on, um, I've got a, a Vauxhall Astra and a Ford KA at the moment, so maybe I'll I'll get them wrapped in WKG livery. Anyway, that's what the car looks like. Um, I'll just quickly show you the inside. Um, oh, actually, I've changed the camera, can't I? There we go. Right, so this is this is my cockpit. This is where I'm going to be living for, a, well, certainly for this full season, and a very nice place to, to sit. There is one glaring flaw in the design of this. Uh, if you look around, all everywhere, not a single cup holder. Uh, so I had the mechanics fit this little table here where the passenger seat would be. And I can put cups of coffee, wine, beer, whatever. Uh, and just hope that my cornering and braking is smooth enough that I don't spill any of that stuff. But I just thought, well, I just didn't get what they were thinking. I mean, there's nothing behind, is there? No, anything? The roof? No. So, serious design flaw, but I think I've amended it to the point where it's usable. We can, you know, adjust and move on, as they say. Um, right, let's go for let's go for a little spin, shall we? Last race, okay. I've got it. Okay, it's already set up on a thirty-minute race around Zolder in Belgium. Beautiful weather. It's against AI opponents, thirty of them, but they are set at one hundred percent skill and one hundred percent aggressiveness. Which, albeit, that's not going to be as good as most online racers that you come up against, but it's still a pretty good test bed, especially if you start in thirtieth out of thirty people. Um, right, let's just jump in. I'm not going to go through what I'm doing now to start the race in terms of setup, etc. I'll cover all that in a future video. Um, this is just this is just so much fun. I mean, it, oh, actually, one important thing: I race in socks, so the shoes need to come off. And luckily, if I can bend my leg that high, I have Team WKG socks and plenty of them. So I will always have official team. Socks. Problem. Uh, the, the pros and cons of socks. Much better feel through the pedals is the pro. Con. I'm definitely getting like blisters and stuff in my feet, and I need to invent some kind of not a slipper, but a sock with padding in certain areas. Um, I also this will this will be familiar to anyone of the racing team, uh, the cycling team. My cramp problem isn't exclusively a cycling problem. I get cramp in my braking foot sometimes. I have to brake pretty hard. Um, but all of that is worth it for the sheer joy and escapism and just mind cleansing that these races give you. Do, do you know what? I mean, it's a time when the whole world has been affected by this tragic, tragic event. And you need, you need to escape. And this is perfect. I mean, everybody's been affected by this at one level or another um, but I don't get why Megan and Kate can't just get on it's just crazy and obviously the Covid thing as well that's been a pain in the ass. Um, but anyway this is my way of escaping the the horrific news stories uh, of recent times right starting at the back here we go you have to start your engine manually Going double file. can you now see why the camera is positioned where it is it's, it nestles perfectly into the dashboard of the Ferrari 488 GT3. And albeit I can see all the normal information on the dashboard in front of me, there's nothing there that you can't see replicated in the, the heads up display. Speed, revs, brake throttle, tyre temperatures, fuel loads, etc. Oh, the race is already on. Alright, okay, here we go. Like I say, I'm not going to. I'm not doing a full race, and it's going to be a horrendous race, I should imagine. But Car on the right. Clear on the right. Let's just have a little bit of a blast. Definitely didn't want first gear there. That's terrible. <clears throat> there were loads of little pointers that I picked up in this uh, this sim over the last six months or so. Car on the right. That make Clear a right. huge difference to both your racing ability and your out-and-out -out speed. And again, it's something I will focus on a lot more specifically over Car time. On the right. Because on the these are things everybody should know right from the start. So that you don't get disheartened early on, as though I you know, I don't get I'm doing everything that these guys are doing. 
Oh, that's right. just ridiculous. I wouldn't do that against real people. Clear on the right. That was just naughty and rude. Um, on the right. And I wouldn't want you to get disheartened, so a few little tips just in terms of car setup and various other things that will just make it more enjoyable and more competitive right from the start. By the way, I'm certainly not going to profess to be any kind of pro or font of knowledge, particularly for this simulator. But, like I say, there are just some crucial things that I have picked up over the months that everybody needs to know about. It's quite a short lap this one, so I'm nearly, nearly done. Final hairpin, uh, final chicane. Stuck behind Klingman in the BMW. <clears throat> now look in the top right corner at the SA rating. That should flash green. There we go. Just did. I'll go into more detail about those another time. But that SA is your safety rating, which is probably the most important rating you can have on this sim because the higher the safety rating, the more leagues and events and races online you unlock. It's the barometer by which most of the... Um, most of the online events Clear measure your right. ability right. and you achieve a higher safety rating by basically close wheel to wheel action Clear without right. contact or losing uh, or coming off the track. Clear on the right. So I obviously just managed that complete first lap without coming off the track at all and staying pretty close to the car ahead. If I did make contact with anyone that rating would go down obviously. <clears throat> but again I said I wasn't going to go on about that and I think I've just explained pretty much the whole thing to you. Right, well you don't need to watch any more of this, I'm going to, I probably won't even finish the race, but I'm just going to continue blasting around for a little while. Um, please let me know what you think in terms of the uh, the layout, um, is it nice and clear to see, is there anything I definitely should or shouldn't be doing when I do these streams? This is all, sim racing streaming is completely new to me, so I am very happy to uh, take on board constructive criticism from anybody that has better knowledge of it than I do um, but at the end of the day I'm here to have fun hopefully get some of you guys involved in chat in actually racing some of the events and uh, it would just be brilliant to end up with a community similar to the one we have for the cycle racing but for sim racing because Car on the right. it's just another brilliant way of freeing your mind for a little while uh, anyway Thank you all so much as I get overtaken, quite embarrassingly, by a big old fat Bentley. Uh, thank you all so much for, for watching. If this does look like something that's going to be of interest to you, please hit that bell thing to, that um, lets you know when I go live or upload a video. Please like, comment, subscribe. All your feedback will be very gratefully appreciated. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Take care.